Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone. It's good to have you back again to this latest episode of Jim and Java where it's our goal to see your income increased and see your organization fully funded. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies, please do so by clicking the subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell so that you are notified of future broadcasts. Well, today's episode, we're gonna focus in on a two-part question where we're gonna address the needs of an organization and its board of directors and how to effectively utilize your board of directors for your nonprofit organization. So if you need to reach out with questions about that please put your questions down in the comment I'd like to know how many of you effectively utilize your board right now if you feel like you're most effectively using your board please put that down in the comment section if you need to reach out to me with questions you can do so on Twitter at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java and also if you need to just reach out to me simply use my email development effectiveness m at gmail.com well, let's jump into our first set of questions it's uh, actually a two-part set of questions the first questions come from Amy a uh, longtime friend and uh, organizational leader let's jump right into our first set of questions this is from Amy in Westminster Maryland and Amy's a longtime friend and also very effective organizational leader. Uh, Amy asks, what would you do, what would you say, Amy asks, what would you say is the best way to equip board members to be effective ambassadors in between meetings? Well, Amy, thanks for your question. It's a good one. And uh, I know that many organizations always want to maximize their board members. Of course, it's important to utilize your board members during your board meeting, but it's also very, very important to utilize your board members when they're not in the board setting. Board members are most effectively used just like, our, like we do with the critical few. I always focus in on that life acrostic. We want board members as well as the critical few which I hope your board members are part of that critical few that is the 20% that brings in 80% of your dollars. But we want to focus in on helping them understand how they can become life partners. L stands for labor, I stands for influence, F stands for finances, and E stands for expertise. And so it's really going to be important for us to make sure that they understand their role. From the labor side of things, there are so many different ways that a board member can be used as ambassadors for your organization. We can ask them to go out to civic organizations to speak on our behalf. We can ask them to speak in their local church on a Sunday morning or during gatherings, say men's retreats, women's retreats. We can ask them to speak within their community. If they've got a Kiwanis, a Rotary Club, we can ask them to speak on our behalf if it relates to our organization and what we're doing. But they can also be active participants in our fundraising strategies. Uh, as an example, we could ask them to be table hosts for our annual dinner. If you do a walkathon, jogathon, we could ask them to get sponsors. We could ask them to be part of any of the organizing things, whether you're doing a small dinner party, we could ask them to um, invite their friends for that, but simply even just volunteering their time. Now, I continue to hear more and more that people are saying to me that the labor or the time commitment is probably one of the most valuable things that they can give up. And of course, I've mentioned before that I've had people say, Jim, I'll give you all the money you need, just don't ask for my time. It's too valuable. But that labor aspect is so important. Uh, they may be able to volunteer uh, something as simple as asking, um, answering the phones for you uh, in, at your headquarters. They might be able to help you fold stuff, seal. But they should really be challenged to become ambassadors for you out in the community. Uh, the I in, in life is influence. And we really need for them to step up and to be influencers, to impact and influence their community and be ambassadors for us. The expectation is that they would go to their friends, neighbors, colleagues, individuals that they work with, individuals, their churches, social organizations, and actually look for opportunities either to speak on your behalf and to challenge people to give 
individually or set up an appointment and ask their friends to join you as the leader of the organization. And I always use the example of a presentation sandwich. The board member should open up the conversation, uh, introduce the person, how they know each other. The board member should introduce you and how you know each other and then talk about their involvement with your organization and the board and then allow you to share success stories, things that have happened with your organization, some positive things that have happened, uh, your mission, vision, values, and then of course uh, activities and events and things that you do. But more than anything, you're going to want to challenge that individual to be a partner with you financially in the organization. And that sandwich being the second half of that sandwich is the board member can either ask on your behalf or set up the, the groundwork for you to make the final ask with them. But in their role of influencer, they really should be influencing their friends to be participants and partners with your organization. On the F side, the finance side, certainly they can be ambassadors and representatives in, uh, on the financial side. They should be giving, they should be some of your most um, involved, most critical partners. Board members should be giving at least 10% of your budget, the combined uh, amount. There shouldn't be any board members that are only serving with their time. They really need to be serving with their their um, labor, influence, finances, and expertise. Make sure that they're part of that as well. But they really should be leading out with their finances. There are so many examples where individuals who have a relationship with your board member may ask, well, what are you giving or what do you recommend that I can give? And it's so important that number one, your board member gives and number two, that they're willing to share at least a range at a minimum, if not share exactly how much they're giving. Because I've had a, I had a horror story one time where a um, board member felt that someone had the real capabilities of giving a large gift. But unfortunately, the board member was not giving anything. And so when they asked along with the, uh, with the, the organizational leader, they asked that person for a gift. The person flipped the tables on the board member and says, well, I'll give exactly what you're giving. How much are you giving? And of course, the board member sheepishly said, I'm not giving anything, unfortunately. And the, and the person said, well, I'll do exactly the same. Don't let that happen in your organization. Then from the expertise side of things, uh, you, want, you want your board members to not only uh, bring their expertise to the table during board meetings, but also throughout uh, the year and in between board members. Uh, in between board meetings. Your board members typically will have a wide variety of gifts and you really should look at their gifts and talents when you recruit them, whether it be talents in finances, marketing, in fundraising, in organizational um, structures, uh, whether that be in human resources, you should be recruiting board members for their skills and talents. Now it's important that you really help them to be effective life partners. And so I would strongly recommend that for them to be ambassadors, that they're also strong life partners and utilizing the life acrostic and their willingness to devote time, their uh, relationship building, that influence, their finances, giving and getting other people to give, and then their expertise uh, are definitely the ways that they can be good ambassadors for your organization. Now, what that means is, is that they need to be trained up. If they don't know a lot about your organization or don't feel adequate about your organization, then they really need to be trained up so that they feel comfortable. That means that you may either spend individual time or collectively with your board, letting them know about your mission, vision, values, all that you do. But uh, most board members seem to know a good amount. It's more just helping them build confidence in what they do. So Amy, I hope that helped. Um, that is the end of your, the first part of your two-part question on boards. And let's jump to the second question. The second part of Amy's question was a good one said, how do you challenge board members to set reasonable goals and expectations uh, to do this? And so what we need to be thinking about with board members is we need to help them to understand not only our organization as a whole, but what makes for reasonable goals and expectations for your board and their roles and responsibilities. 
it's important that your board members understand what their role and responsibility is and for a lot of organizations in fact most good organizations the board members role is to uh, set policies set procedures but also to set goals for your organization and even goals for themselves they ought to have goals for what they hope to accomplish as a board whether that be your mission uh, helping to develop a mission for an organization i know your particular organization has a mission already and also you need to make sure that they understand what is their role and responsibility within not only helping to provide oversight of the organization, they should help with strategic planning and also development planning as well too, the fundraising planning. It's so important that if board members have ownership in an organization, then they are gonna be more active participants. They certainly wanna give more of their time, more than just their opinion. And that can happen way too often. And that will happen at board members, at board meetings and in between. Uh, board members can get very opinionated, but then outside the meeting, they don't are not active participants. It's important that you encourage your board members to do more than just give opinions, but they're active participants. That means, as I said, that they also get involved with their labor, but also with their finances. There should be some goals set out there for board giving. Uh, I, I use the, uh, the, the percentage of 10% in answering the first question, that a good board should be giving at least 10%. Some are giving 20% for your total overall budget. Uh, that's collectively, but there should be some individual goals. And I'm not saying that it should be equal giving, but it definitely should be equal sacrifice. I'm not going to expect someone who doesn't have the net worth to, to be giving 20000 that you could say every one of your board members gives 20000 But there should be a level that everyone feels comfortable that you could say at least this dollar amount and that uh, everyone would feel like they were making somewhat of a sacrifice to your organization. So there should be some goals in setting that. And the expectations that your board members should have of themselves is, once again, is active participation. And if people can't actively participate in your organization, then there are some issues there. And I've had some board members that have gotten a little bit too active in that they thought they actually were running the organization when the job of the CEO and the president is to run the organization. The board should provide oversight. If a board member begins to overstep that role and responsibility and see themselves almost as the CEO or the president of the organization, the board chair should step in, or if it is the board chair that's doing that, then the executive director should step in and participate in helping to reshape or reframe the thinking of the board member. So it's really, really important. But as far as setting overall goals for the organization, uh, that is very important. But also, there ought to be some individual goals that the board members help to set themselves. In the labor side, how much time can they give? In the influence side, can we set a goal of between now and December 31st? How many appointments can they set up with the executive director and a potential major donor? Or how many at-home dinner parties can they and their spouse have? for presentation of what the organization is doing. And from the, um, the, um, uh, the expertise side of things, what are the goals and expectations of utilizing those skills and talents that people have? So it's really, really important that if we can help to guide and shape the thinking, the mindset, and more than anything, the expectations of the board. Because oftentimes, as I said, too many board members really see their role as just attending a board meeting, giving opinions, and nothing more. And it, it is so important and so vital that you choose the right board members. Recruiting of board members is extremely important. And where I generally start with, I start with my mailing list, I start with my donor list. Who are my critical few? Are there any individuals who are currently giving that 20% that brings in 80% of your dollars? Are they part of that group? If they are, you've already gone a good step towards getting the right board member because that finance side is typically one of the biggest hurdles. And if they currently are part of your critical few, then it is so important that they, um, that, that they understand 
what are the other elements in the labor influence and expertise side. But if you can recruit from your current major donors, that's always a great place to start. And then determine where are your needs. If you need someone with a finance background, marketing background, human resources background, just a good communicator, all those things are so important. And chances are your board will know uh, some of those people that are major donors and see if they've got those gifts and talents. So Amy, I hope that answered your questions. Thank you again once more, and uh, we just appreciate uh, all the questions that people have. Don't forget, if you have got fundraising questions, reach out to me at Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And also make sure that uh, if you need to reach me and are not on Twitter, you can reach me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And be sure to subscribe. Uh, we sure would want that so much for you to be a subscriber of this channel. And as I always say, we hope that you would increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks. See you next time.